Hi, um, welcome, welcome to this week's Ask Charlie. I'm sitting here with all this beautiful light flooding through, thinking, yay, it's spring and uh, we've got gorgeous weather, but it is, um, Florence is barking. She's barking at Tess because Tess is in the house. Tess was asleep on the sofa a moment ago, but Florence has woken her up and is now barking at her. Florence! Hopefully she's quiet now. Anyway, it is bitterly cold. And normally when I embark on spring cleaning, I want to throw open the doors. I want to throw open the windows and really kind of get cleaning properly. Oh, bless her, she's <laughs> little Florence. Kind of, she's very good at coming when she's called, aren't you, Flo? But please don't bark. Um, yeah, back to spring cleaning. So I want to kind of get get spring cleaning, but it is actually too cold to kind of do a proper job. But I thought I would do some cleaning with you guys today. I need to blitz this room. I noticed the cobwebs up there in the roof lantern are hideous. They are really bad. So I am actually going to stand on the table. Get the vacuum cleaner up there, get the feather duster and start there. I always start at the top and work my way down because there's no point in hoovering the floor if you're going to start dislodging things up there and then you've got to hoover again. So you've got to approach spring cleaning, cleaning with kind of common sense and with thought and, um, oh look, Florence is just mastered, that's the first time she's done it. Uh, how to get up onto the sofa. The sofa is a complete mess. I have not started cleaning yet today, but I thought I would, um, yeah, I'll do it with you. But when we're cleaning, we, we want to think about things kind of logically and sensibly and think, yeah, start at the top, work way down. And then I often um, will go round the room kind of clockwise or anti-clockwise, depending um, I don't know, like it depends how I feel and <laughs> that sounds ridiculous. But if I want to spice things up, I might go the other way. But I, I apply method to my cleaning. Talking about applying method to cleaning, I actually have a cleaning guide and schedule on my website. So you can kind of print it off and work through it. But it's got all of my top cleaning tips. It's a really, really popular download and it's just useful, I think to have like a cleaning kind of routine, particularly if you're super busy. Like you can see things and do them, but I find just looking, glancing at a list and thinking, okay, yeah, just do that. And I have a system to how I clean the house. So on Mondays, I do the kitchen and I do our um, bedroom and bathroom, clean sheets, things like that. I hoover, you know, obviously if there are things that I see that need doing, then I just do it. But the big things like kitchen, bathrooms, changing beds are done on set days. The children's bedrooms are all Wednesday, on a Wednesday. And I just find that kind of works. And it means I know when their sheets need to be changed. And I know when I'm going to have like masses of laundry to tackle as well. So I just find with a busy life and and children and lots going on and the B&B &B and you know all that jazz if I've got like a system and a structure it's just so much easier and I find it more manageable and then I kind of know where I am and you know sometimes I might not have time to do a bathroom on a Monday but I can do it on Tuesday it's obviously not a big deal but just to have like a bit of a structure, a bit of an idea, a bit of a guide of what's happening when I find really helpful. I also find cleaning really therapeutic. I know that might sound ridiculous, but I do. And I think with everything going on in the world at the moment and all the, you know, the, the distress and the anxiety and the worry, I, you know, throw myself into a task. Florence is on the table. Florence, get down. Get down, get down. No, not on there. Get down. Don't go on there, that's so naughty. <laughs> so, yeah, just mastered how to get onto the sofa. You don't want, I don't mind her on, I don't mind the little ones on the sofa, but I do mind them on the side table. Anyhow, where was I? Um, yeah, finding cleaning therapeutic, or you know, just 
tackling a job, whether it's clearing out a cupboard or just being like, right, I'm gonna just blitz this room and have a really good sort out. Um, I do find it good for the soul. And I find, um, you know, either I will listen to a podcast, but at the moment I just want to be kind of with my own thoughts. Sometimes a welcome distraction is good, particularly in the evening. I'm not listening to the news. Um, you know, past nine o'clock, I put something on that um, it's just a little bit more lighthearted or, or read or just, um, you know, just take my mind off the news. I want to know what's going on in the world. I want to watch the news, but I'm being quite selective, like when I do, um, because I find otherwise I'm just not gonna sleep. So anyway, I think I've got to stop chatting. <laughs> just get on and clean, to be honest. So when I put an apron on, I know that I mean business. This is one of my my aprons. I love it. Um, and I just find, I know it might sound silly, but if I've got an apron on, I'm like at work. I'm on it and um, yeah, it's just like, you know, my uniform. And also if I kind of get cobwebs or, you know, if I'm washing something and I get a bit of a mess, it doesn't matter when I go out, I don't have to change my top. I can just th throw my apron in the wash. So apron on means business. I have got my melee out and I'm gonna start with this. I'm just going to take the head off. So I've got a longer bit I can extend that. And I am going to stand on the table and suck up as many of those cobwebs as I possibly can. I have also got this, but I'm going in with this first. Florence has got terribly overexcited since I have got this out. This is <laughs> my ostrich feather extendable. Look, it extends a long way. Um, duster. Now, um, it does seem really odd standing on the kitchen table <laughs> chatting to you. But I have vacuumed all the way around the roof lantern and now I'm going to go in with the feathers. We've got the most amazing window cleaner called Kevin. I love him. He's been coming forever, ever since we've lived here. So that's like 17 years. Um, he does outside. I do inside. I actually can't remember when I did inside the roof lantern. I might ask him to do that next time he's here and he might have to put a ladder on the table or move the table or something, but it isn't great. But I'm not going to do that today. I am going to do that at the windows. And um, yeah, so let's let's go in with this bad boy. I'll leave a description of this. Um, I'll leave a link in the description. It's what I'm trying to say to you below this video to one of these. They are brilliant, really handy, particularly the extendable bit. Um, so I'm just literally all the way around. And again, like working in a system so you know like where you started so you go all the way around and you don't miss anything that is quite important and I don't know if you can see but there are objects flying down at me which is exactly why you don't want to vacuum the floor until you have finished doing a job like this and you know this isn't something I do once a week this is um you know, on my list of spring cleaning stuff, but I don't have to open all the windows to clean this. And I don't want to have to open all the windows because it is so cold out there. Looks can be terribly deceiving because it looks like it's utterly stunning, but it's really, really not. My fingers went numb this morning doing the ponies. Anyway, I'm gonna crack on and get this done. There, it's all done, and I'm just going to continue 
to flick my feather duster around the place. So literally just kind of using this just to dust off the walls behind the blinds and just kind of flick any kind of dust and cobweb that have got caught behind there over the winter and just give it all a little bit of a freshen up before I go in with a cloth. You want to try and get as much off as you can to begin with. I'm not doing a thorough spring clean today. I'm doing like half a spring clean if that makes sense. Normally I would open up all the windows and wipe all the woodwork and the, the frames around the windows but I'm not doing that today because it's just too nippy but I'm just using this to dust you know, again, starting at the top, starting in the corners and working all the way around, getting behind the blinds and just flicking off as much kind of dust and cobwebs and anything that's been caught behind there over the winter and just, yeah, just working my way slowly kind of round. When I'm doing a really deep spring clean, I would get in there with the kind of cloth and stuff. I'm just gonna do the windows. I'm not gonna do the woodwork today until it's warm enough to open up the windows and do a proper job then. I don't want to disturb her, his dear old Tess. She is rapidly heading towards uh, 14, which is pretty, pretty old in dog years. She looks so comfortable there. I don't want to disturb her, so I'm gonna go do a few other jobs first and then come back and sort this sofa out, because look, it's a complete mess. Anyway, they won't be for much longer. <laughs> I find it quite difficult to take these canvases off on my own. So that is a two-man job, so I shall rope Sai in to help me take those off and clean behind. It's really important that you do take the dog's aid. <laughs> Bits of wood are in the fire. Um, it's really important that you do take pictures off the wall and clean behind them. Um, you know, a few times a year, and so there's not a build up. But if you've got a picture that is quite awkward, quite big, quite heavy, don't do it on your own. Rope in an extra pair of hands to help you. So at the moment, I'm just dusting literally around, around them. And the great thing about this, it's really delicate, so you're not gonna damage anything. Um, which is really, really important. You don't want to do any damage when you're cleaning. Lampshades, I will show you. I do those with a vacuum cleaner, so we will get onto those in a minute. But I'm just gonna finish whizzing round the rest of the room. I have noticed that the TV is pretty dirty, the screen itself. It's a Samsung, it's quite old. It's been up there for ages, and um, I'm gonna give it a clean. I have got two microfiber cloths. Never use any product on a TV screen at all. This one is slightly damp. I have talked to you before, I don't know whether it's on one of my courses or on a YouTube video, about wringing out. Your cloth needs to be wrung out so tightly that it's not gonna drip because you don't want to put um, too much water on there. Literally just slightly damp and I used hot water so it's, it's warm, slightly damp. I am just going to climb up here and very, very gently make sure that your cloth is super soft and you're not going to scratch your TV. Don't use anything abrasive. Like it's got little marks from flies and spiders and, you know, things. Fingerprints from the children. I wonder whether anyone will notice that I've cleaned it. Oh, and I should have said at the beginning, make sure that your TV is turned off um, at the mains before you go to start cleaning it, particularly with a damp cloth. Then get your dry cloth and just dry it off and make sure that there aren't any marks left and you've got them all done. When it comes to lampshades, you have two options. You can either blow the dust with a hairdryer or you can suck the dust up with, um, with your vacuum cleaner. This is one of the reasons why I love the Miele cat and dog is it has these different attachments. So I have three attachments. This one, great for stairs. This 
one for getting down the side of things and this one for all, all manner of things. I literally use this attachment for all sorts of things. You know, even just vacuuming the walls, you can, you know, suck up that dust rather than using the feather duster and flicking the dust. But, you know, it depends, it depends what you're doing. But I find this, this attachment really helpful. So let's turn her on, do the lamp shade. Furniture polish. When you have antiques, it's really important that you polish them and you look after them. I don't do this on a weekly basis, but I do do it. Um, well, I wipe them, I dust them on a regular basis, but I don't put the furniture polish on probably about three, literally about three times a year. It depends. If you've got a piece of furniture that is by a radiator or in direct sunlight all the time and it dries out, then you might need to use furniture polish more frequently. I also think it's really important to be mindful of the products that you're using. You know, I'm trying to avoid sprays. I'm trying to avoid using, you know, chemicals the whole time. And so far, this is the first product I've used. I've literally used a vacuum cleaner and some water. And I think um, we don't need to be using all of these products. So traditional beeswax, you can also get this in a brown colour if you want to make a piece of furniture slightly darker. Um, I'm just using the clear stuff and literally you only need a tiny, tiny amount and just work it into your piece of furniture. So I'm going to let this kind of soak in as well before I buff it up and not putting too much on. You don't need, you know, just literally little amounts, but you'll feel the wood absorb it and you'll know um, if you need to put more on, if that makes sense, you'll get the feel of it. Um, you know, furniture needs to be looked after and um, this is a great way to do it. And don't forget the front of your furniture too. I'm actually not going to polish the brass handles. I quite like the kind of aged age effect. I'm just going to give the cupboards, the fronts all polish. When you've worked in your furniture polish to um, to your piece of furniture, then just let you know, let it soak in, let it do its thing. I'm really sorry about Florence. I don't know what has got into her today. Anyhow, once it's kind of soaked in and absorbed, you can then use a clean dry cloth and just give it literally just a buff up before you put anything back on it. Picture frames. I see so many picture frames that get damaged because people put spray onto the glass and then the spray seeps down in between the glass and the picture uh, frame and then the bottom of the, pit, the photograph that's in between gets damaged and so don't put any sprays on your picture frames. If your glass is dirty then take it apart, take your photo out, take the glass out and clean, you know, you can either use spray or just, um, you know, just wipe the glass, but don't clean it, you know, with spray whilst the frame is intact. It, you can just um, really avoid damaging your photographs. And it's so sad when you see a photo that's been damaged by using, you know, window lean spray or, or, you know, whatever it might be that you're using. So don't do that. This um, top, top tip for you. So that, that picture is clean. So I shall just do the same with the others. Give them a quick, quick wipe over. But it's very important that you just don't use any sprays um, 
with the picture there. And, and if you do use um, some spray or, or go and wash the glass, make sure it's completely bone dry before you put the photo back in. And I've got, I don't know if you can see, uh, something nasty on me. I'm gonna go and wash this. Washed and dried, and I shall pop that back in the frame. I love this picture from my wedding with mum and my brother and Cy. It feels like such a long time ago. It's, yeah, um, it is quite a long time ago. Right, there, those are done. And now a silver frame. It's this, um, I think this frame was a wedding present. And, oh, I'm just shaking it and not showing you. Goddard's do amazing silver cleaners and they do these wonderful cloths. This one, as you can see, is quite well worn. These cloths are really good. They're not gonna damage the photo, so you don't need to worry about that. And they last a long time too. Remember when you're cleaning silver to be very gentle over the hallmark. I have got a whole video, which I will link down below about cleaning silver. We have got a few special things that are silver and need a little bit extra attention. So this is just a really kind of good way <laughs> to clean your silver. This cloth, I don't know if you can see, but that looks a lot better already and you saw minimal effort there. And sometimes it's quite a faff to kind of get out all the silver cleaning stuff, but when you have got a silver frame that just needs a quick wipe over, that is the perfect way to do it. I love to have real flowers, but it's not always realistic or possible, particularly, particularly this time of year when I don't have anything to pick from the garden. But I want something just to make things look prettier. So actually these are a great, great option. And they're, you know, really environmentally friendly too, because I'm going to have those for years. And so, you know, I'm not buying flowers that are shipped across the world and then you know, will die and I'll be throwing away. So I am a big fan of faux flowers. Um, they, you know, there's a place for them. I don't have them all the time, all year round. I mix them up, um, change things around, but um, I think they're excellent. I'm not gonna do all the windows today because I've got to get those dogs out um, for a nice walk. And um, I've got to go to school and watch one of the children in the match. But having chatted to Kevin, um, gosh, quite a long time ago, years ago, about cleaning windows, <laughs> uh, you learn so much from asking questions. And so I always ask people, you know, whether it's somebody that comes to fix the washing machine to show me, you know, what I can do. And again, you know, with Kevin, Kevin, what's the best way to clean windows? Little bit of fairy liquid on a damp cloth. So. You know, in, in my sink over there, my kitchen sink, I've got some fairy liquid, some, you know, warm sudsy water, and I literally just wipe like this. No newspaper, no chamois leathers, none of that jazz, just a little bit of fairy liquid. And those that have done my efficient home course will be chuckling because I talk about fairy liquid all the time. It's amazing stuff i use it um i use it a lot you know i'm trying to be more sustainable in my home i have used ecova i don't find it as effective as fairy liquid and i think if you use fairy liquid sparingly it's it's okay it's better than having you know lots of chemicals that i'm spraying on my windows now i literally is a little bit of sudsy water i put a couple of drops in 
And so I'm gonna wipe all of these. When I do the whole room properly, which I probably won't film, I'll be in my workout gear and I'll just blitz it. But I will wipe all of the woodwork as well at the same time. And then with your dry cloth, literally just dry off and then you won't have any smears. So all you need is two cloths, a damp one, a dry one, make sure it's damp and you've wrung it out properly. A couple of drops of fairy liquid and your windows will be gleaming. Really annoyingly, this one. So we've got really thin double glazing in here and that need, that whole pane needs to be replaced, which is really irritating. There's a couple of others around the house, but it's quite difficult to get them to come out for just like a couple of panes. So we shall, we shall wait. It's not the end of the world. I've um, learned to live with it. After the sofa. I hate this sofa. I can't believe I'm saying that. Um, I don't hate it, but I do hate it. I think I have a love-hate relationship with it. I find the cushions so irritating. <laughs> it literally needs kind of poofing two or three times a day. When anyone sits in it, it needs poofing. And it's not so easy because of its size. Florence is trying to eat this as I'm um, folding it up. Um, <laughs> it's not so easy to poof and it just looks messy and it looks horrid. And because it's in the kitchen, everyone can see it. So if I were to ever replace this sofa, I wouldn't have the loose back um, cushions. I would have like a rigid back and not so many cushions because it's just a pain. It's one of my bugbears. But because we let the children on, well, we let the children on, of course we let the children on the sofa, because we let the dogs on is what I meant to say, that, um, you know, it's just got trashed. These cushions need recovering it's on my to-do list. Penny, could you get down? Because it's really not helpful you being up there. Come on. Come on, sweetie. Come on. You get up. There you go. And I keep, this is just an Ikea throw, but I keep this on here because a cream covers. I mean, what was I thinking? What was I thinking? It's got completely trashed, but it's fine. And Florence, you can't get on it while I'm trying to make it. And when I'm doing like a spring cleaning job, I get the vacuum and go, you know, all the way around and uh, take off whichever covers I can as well and wash them. Florence, you're being really, really unhelpful today. How can Mummy do the sofa with you jumping on it? How can I do it? You're being a pain, but we're going to go for a walk in a minute. I just need to do the sofa and then where's the vacuum round? And we are done. Yes, we are done. You go and play. thing is to whiz the vacuum round. I've wiped down the table, that is all polished. The sofa is looking poofed and much better. I'm not going to mop the floor today, I am just going to simply whiz the hoover round. game that she plays with the vacuum cleaner of barking at it. So I can't even hoover in peace. 
I have Tiffany Florence. Penny is scared. She's scared witless of the vacuum cleaner. As soon as I get it out, she scuffers and isn't to be seen. But this one is very brave and very courageous and likes to play with it, don't you? You like to play with it. Yes, you do. You do. Right, I just need to wipe the hearth down and I'm going to take them out for a lovely dog walk in the sunshine. I think we'll wrap up warm though. I just remembered while I um, was getting my cloth that I've got a video of how to clean the glass on your um, on your wood burner. So if you have a wood burner, um, I will link that video in the description below this one. Look, she likes to get involved with everything. And if I shut her away, she just barks at me. So I just let her get involved. Um, but yeah, if you want to know how to clean your glass and your wood burner, I will link that bit video below and hopefully you find it helpful. It's reminded me that I need to do mine. Oh, I'm getting ready to go for a walk. I often get asked how I keep the house clean with so many dogs. And I think the answer to that is having a basket of dog towels which as soon as we get in from a walk I just rub them all down. We have got a kennel as well so if they are really really filthy I might put them in the kennel so they can dry up dry out out there. Penny and Flo don't go into the kennel um, they stay in the house the whole time and if they're really filthy then I'll just wash them in the laundry room sink and the Labradors get a bath up um, up at the yard with the little dogs go in the sink which is really handy but I'm putting my coat on I've got my lovely I'm absolutely loving these sorts from Pair of Scotland I haven't worn anything anything but and it's they're just perfect perfect for my welly boots and perfect in this still chilly but sunny weather I really love walking up here and seeing the little lambs, it's just, just gorgeous. Although they're not breaking all the dogs. They're just so sweet. It's always such a happy sight seeing them. The little Flo hasn't quite worked out how to get onto the bridge. Penny! Penny! Pen! Come on! Hopefully Penny will show her. No. Come on, girls! You might follow me. A flow! Flow, come on! Yeah, she did it. She did it. Tess decided that she was too tired and she didn't want to come. She spent quite a lot of this morning in the garden, so she didn't want to come for our walk today. Girls, come on, we're going this way! Come on! It is the most beautiful, beautiful spring day. A nip in the air, but I can feel a little bit of warmth in that sunshine which is really exciting. It's not gonna be long before we can throw open our doors and windows and properly spring clean. I hope you guys are all all right. I'm finding myself a little bit anxious, a little bit unsettled at the moment, but I think just, you know, kind of not cracking on, but throwing yourself into some jobs that need doing, focusing on, you know, certain tasks just takes your mind off um, everything that's going on in the world. Anyway, thank you for tuning in. I am sending you lots and lots of love. Keep safe, keep strong, and I will see you again next week. Oh, and I forgot to say, do remember to subscribe if you haven't already. Ring the bell for notifi notifications of my weekly video. Like this video leave me a comment. It helps other people find my channel and I would be really grateful of that. Thank you. Yesterday there was sun and there was rain.
something in the air and a sparkly shimmer on our skin.